please get up for Mr. Simon Evans, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. How are you all? You're well? Good. Thank you. Very nice to be here. Um, <coughs> a couple of things I will uh, dispense with before we go too much further. Firstly, uh, my accent, which often is the cause of some sort of comment if I don't deal with it myself. <laughs> and uh, so I will tell you, if you are struggling to place it, that is, in fact, educated. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't expect applause for my privileges. I say, <laughs> I say privileges. It wasn't an expensive education. I just paid attention. That's all. But uh, you'd be amazed. Uh, what you can do. I was under the mistaken apprehension that learning to speak correctly would smooth my passage through life. Instead, of course, nowadays it mainly provokes hostility. <laughs> You get a lad like Dave Johns, your compere this evening, comes out of Newcastle, he can travel the world with a Geordie accent and people immediately warm to the implications of his harsh background. He, uh, <laughs> so valiantly escaped. I, on the other hand, went to Newcastle recently to do some gigs the way they reacted. You think I closed their fucking pits myself, quite frankly, was... <laughs> Explicit hostility. <laughs> and I said to them, this is an educated accent, you may not be familiar with it. Well, they were fine about that, funnily enough, at first. One of them got it, passed it round, things turned a bit ugly. But, uh... <laughs> I was halfway home by then, so that's all right. <laughs> It was a three-night engagement, but I thought it best to go home. It's, it's night, it's only a couple of hundred miles each way. You don't want to be taking a chance with a hotel room up there, do you? It's, uh... I went back the following night. They trashed the place, apparently. <laughs> Looks exactly the same to me, I have to say. Uh... <laughs> rubble is rubble at the end of the day, isn't it? You move it about a bit to express your frustration. It's, it's more feng shui than vandalism, really, isn't it? It's, uh... I mean, don't get me wrong, I have nothing but sympathy for the Geordie blight. And I tell you what, they're a bit ahead of the curve as far as economic distress is concerned. We could learn a thing or two. Uh, Dave has done well getting himself out of there. And uh, we will all have to follow suit. It was about 30 years ago, I think, the hard about a generation ago. Until then, in the 1980s, it was widely understood. You get a harness on a Geordie, you can get a lot of work done. That's a fact. <laughs> That simple mechanism had underpinned the northeastern economy for centuries. But nowadays, you are no longer allowed to harness Geordies. Not without their express written permission, anyway. So that's obviously a non-starter. They didn't think that one through in Brussels, did they? No. Meddling Eurocrats. I'm the short amuse them a great deal to dress Geordies up in suits and make them work in cubicles. They don't like it. <laughs> Call centres. It's no work for Geordies. They're outdoor people. <laughs> they endure extremes of temperature with very little adjustment in their clothing. I, uh, I'm sure it's been commented on already. Dave is proud of this fact, and quite rightly so. It's an impressive sight. I went up there. It's the middle of winter. Has been for years. They, uh, <laughs> Freezing wind blowing in off the North Sea, full of sleet. Bits of old boat. B-45s. Torn to shreds, but you can tell from the tint. And, uh, The thing that struck me uh, was a rivet, as it turned out. I, uh, I thought I'd been shot, but no, apparently... Stray bolt from the uh, old shipyards. No, the thing that struck me. The women, in particular, walking around in their underwear, what well, I'd originally taken to be a sort of pink and purple mottled shell suit affair, was in fact the flesh. <laughs> of these women, such as they are now. I enjoy a windstiffen nipple as much as the next one. <laughs> 
I even count myself a connoisseur, I think. <laughs> Al dente, that would be my preference. The, uh, the firm but not brittle nipple, that's what you want. With a bit of give, but still with a sense of purpose. <laughs> Enough to hang your hat on, but not your umbrella. <laughs> I actually used to write pornography for a living. It uh, wasn't terribly erotic, but it was detailed, I like to think. <laughs> All I'm saying, I think once your cleavage has gone the colour of Stilton, it's time to dress up a bit. I was, uh... I was in a bar, I heard a woman say to her friend, don't wear your bra in here, you won't feel the benefit when you go out. <laughs> I hardly dared look, but I forced myself. And, uh... <laughs> That is an image that will stay with me for some time. <laughs> Thanks to my new camera phone. <laughs> the trick is to look as if you're texting. Oh, I don't know it's, uh... <laughs> Keep your eyes on the screen. <laughs> the funny thing is they like shopping for clothes. They enjoy the shopping, uh, the retail experience, the retail therapy, the, the, particularly the out-of-town retail parks, these uh, vast, sprawling... Sort of, uh, Matalan, for instance, would be an example of this kind of phenomenon. And I, I'm a, I have an eye for a bargain. Believe me, I thought I'd go in and have a look. It's quite a dismal sight. Huge shed full of clothing, or cloth at any rate. I mean, I couldn't be sure if it was all in human shape. Some of it may have been intended for livestock, but... Uh, <laughs> Seem to, be, seem to be getting snapped up nonetheless, uh, yeah. People rummaging around as if searching for dead relatives. Really... Let's put in mind of the works of Hieronymus Bosch. But, uh... It was only when I got to the till, I, I discovered it's actually quite exclusive, Matlan. You have to be a member to shop at Matlan. They won't have just anyone wandering in off the street. If you've got a quid and you know where you live, you're in. No. There are those hurdles to clear. That, uh, <laughs> that keeps the riffraff out, so... <laughs> Back to TK Maxx with me, is that it? That's it. <laughs> I'm not joining up your club. <laughs> anyway, by now a few of you are probably thinking this is all very well, but where are his eyes? <laughs> Yeah. Once again, no need to applaud. Uh, uh, freak of nature, nothing that I've had to work on. I uh, take no meaningful pride in the fact, but it can appear on stage that there is nothing more than a couple of crude knife slits pushed into my face. Like some sort of gingerbread man, or uh, perhaps a child's pottery project. Spent a bit too long on the nose, ran out of time, just jabbed a spatula in for the eyes. That'll do. I'm off for a wank. No. <laughs> girls will be girls. I, uh... <laughs> I do have fully functioning eyes, and I suspect in some cultures it would be considered quite a benefit to have them concealed from the elements such as mine are, but I've mainly had to endure insults. I remember they started, I was about six years old. Piggy little eyes, eyes like pistols in the snow. <laughs> Seen bigger eyes on a potato. <laughs> Mother could be very cruel. <laughs> Still, she's in a home now. 